afternoon. And we have, as I say, the possible gives that all the folk has a chance to make jokes. So let's have Raphael Stenchel, something like that, and mix it up again. Uh, on the infinite one or two? Two. Two, categorical two. This, this analyzation factor. Okay, a new one, right? Imaginary dimensions. Um, so first a few words. Let me first start with a few words to the title. I mean, the second part of the title. Uh, I learned yesterday only that uh, though we are apparently uh, the form of intrinsic chemical theory. I didn't know that. I wish to apologize. I didn't mean to spite the man. Um, second of all, in fact. Uh, much of the much of the talk today, I mean, everything will be about infinity categories. But I can imagine that uh, not everybody is comfortable with infinity category theory. And in fact, all of what I will say today, uh, whenever I say infinity category, the word can be replaced by ordinary category. If you are flexible enough in your head to replace certain equivalences by strict identities and certain group points by sets, you have to do that in your head then. Um, second, then infinity two becomes two category. Yes. Uh, second of all, um, much of the material I want to talk about today uh, is still to be written up, so um, it still may be due to some possible change in the near future. Uh, I'm very sure that uh, the whole picture works out very well, um, but uh, one detail or the other, the other might change, so if something is just talking to you, it may be possible that it still has to be tweaked, so that you know uh, if that is the case. Now let me start, before I talk about the externalization factor, what I, mean, what I mean by that, let me start with a few uh, recollections about just the plain old unit I'm okay? Where this will be denoted often meant to be uh, the Cresci category, or a small category B, or, in this case, the uh, Cresci infinity category of contrary functions into space, into the infinity category spaces, over a small infinity category B. Can you read this size-wise? Now, first of all, uh, this is the unit of Emma. I will not, I will not phrase it out. Uh, just, Remember that uh, it basically gives us, gives us a way to compute the potential transformations that are representable in a very easy way, right? By just evaluating the identity and can be thought of as a universal property that classifies the representable three sheets among all the other three sheets. Uh, and as a corollary of the uh, unit dilemma, we all know that the unit on that is very faithful. And that even more is true, <sighs> namely that uh, the Y preserves and hence reflects all limits that exist in B. So the unit embedding, whenever we start with a left exact category B, the unit embedding gives a one-to-one -one correspondence between finite limit structures in B and finite limit structures in the image of the unit embedding. Right? So uh, this is an, uh, an instance of, inter of the internalization externalization process. Why we can, if we have a finite limit structure in the image, which is a finite limit structure of pre sheets, which we can think of B indexed sets. Right? And B and accept theory is something very concrete, then we can internalize that finite limit structure in B, where we have a synthetic logic, where things can be very abstract uh, and formal. Right? And vice versa, if we have a finite limit structure in the internal logic of B, then we can externalize it along the unit embedding to obtain something about B indexed sets. Or in the infinity categorical case, about B indexed spaces. Um, indeed, uh, I mean, many examples, right, which we use in, 
which we use in the in practice is, well, in order to show that a certain map in B has a retract or a section, it suffices to, it suffices to check that for the representable uh, pre-sheet associated to it. The same holds for uh, isomorphisms, right? Because, of course, the minimum dating is conservative. And more generally, I mean, there's a whole theory about this these conservativity results, right, already in the classical literature about non calculi right, there's this, uh, in the paper of Scott, uh, who shows that, I mean, if we, if, if we think of, if B has exponentials and time limits, and we can think of it as a model for the type non calculus, then the linear embedding is a conservative extension of that model of the uh, type non calculus into what he calls a, uh, what do you call it, an, an inter interestingistic theory of types, right, which is then, uh, who modified appreciation? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. I asked who. And then yes, yes, yes. I think this is relating theories of nominal All right. So, uh, furthermore, Y generates the appreciate category under co limits. In fact, not only B as the pre co-completion of uh, B hat, but as the pre co-completion of B, but in fact, more generally, every co-completion under whatever class of co-limits uh, will be generated by, by doing it in bed. So this is also very, very stable and general result. And lastly, uh, to say something about uh, logic, say, uh, ben Atou in, uh, in his paper about where he introduces the idea of uh, concurrential schemes and the naive, naive theory of categories, uh, he thinks of representables as small pre sheets. Right? So these are these the B index sets which can be which which are small relative to the base B, namely there's an object in B which represents that large potentially large pre sheet which happens to be small. <laughs> Is it a property of the representables or is it a property of Ben Abu? Uh, uh, so, this is a definition of representable, basically. This is just an interpretation. Yeah, it's, it's a way to think about it. Uh, so far, at least. There will be a notion of smallness, which then is derived from this. Okay, so, so much to the unit and then. Now, uh, for the following, we'll, we'll assume that B is a left exact category. Because then we can define a category of internal categories to be. So, in the infinity categorical case, the infinity category of internal infinity categories to be. Uh, now, this is defined. I will not give you the definition, but know that this is defined uh, by requiring. So these are certain simplicial diagrams in B that certain finite cones of structure maps are limiting. Right? So uh, if, you, uh, if you are familiar with infinity category theory, then these are exactly the single conditions and the completeness condition. And these are just higher, higher homotopical versions of what we know to be a category object in a category, right? So these are higher versions of having an object of objects can be an object of arrows and a reflexive graph like that. And then we want to consider pullback of a source and target and we want to have a composition map uh, over according maps into here, mm -hmm. we want to have a unit and certain comp composition <laughs> certain community diagrams of this, right? And this is all encoded in the simplicial diagram. Here we just have two levels, level zero, level one. Uh, and all these things are then encoded in simplicial structure plus these limiting conditions we impose. So it follows quite immediately that whenever B is left exact, this diagram, diagram can be left exact, and because these are all just limiting conditions and limits commute with each other, this will be left exact again. Right. So 
fairly immediate is that that DPD inherits all final limits. All right. Now we make the following definition, namely we consider some special objects in B, and then we apply the unit of the unit embedding pointwise to obtain some special object secretions over B, and then we just curry once to uh, obtain functors from B from, uh, from B into some special, uh, some special spaces. And now in here we have our internal categories, and in here we have our functors from B into internal categories to spaces. And because the data length preserves finite limits, <laughs> we obtain a functor uh, factor in this thing. And then lastly, uh, we know just as category objects and sets are just categories, category infinity category objects and spaces are just infinity categories, so we can uh, push forward on the equivalence of infinity categories. And now this composition here is called the externalization function. Uh, right. So uh, this is a lot of drawing for something far fairly simple as an idea, at least technically to write it down. At least in the infinity cate uh, categorical case can be a bit uh, messy. But what we really do is we start with an infinity category, uh, an internal infinity category C here, which is a certain collection, well, a simplicity diagram, and so on. Jesus again. <laughs> uh, and so, what we do is we, we, we associate to it an index infinity category, which sends an object. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which sends an object B here and uh, to the category whose objects are the maps into C0, whose arrows are the, are the maps into C1, whose two cells are this, and these, uh, the fact that these things here commute and that this is an internal infinity category will give us that this is piecewise possible. Alright, right. I'll keep this for a bit. So, just to relate it to the unit embedding, which we had on the board earlier, we have the unit embedding here, and we have the internal categories to be here, and we have the index categories here, and we have the externalization factor here. And on the one hand, we can think of every object in B as an internal groupoid, and for, on the other hand, we can take an internal category and associate to it the core, uh, which can be written or can be computed as just taking the, the, the object objects. And the joint. And here, we can do the same thing. Every tree sheet is, of course, an index uh, category. And also here, we can go the other way around by just push, uh, foot pushing forward with the core function to space. Mm -hmm. And same thing here. And this diagram moves both directions. And this is a full cool diagram. So those internal categories, which externally are group wheel, and in fact, already internally group wheel. All right. Now, there is, in fact, a nice Yoneda lemma associated to the externalization functor. And the whole story of the talk will be everything I told you about the Yoneda lemma basically stays true for the externalization functor. And there are, in the end, there will be one implication where this is useful, just as it is useful to know that you have a conservativity, uh, a collection of conservativity results for finite structure between pre sheets and peak. So, they, I, I just call this a secret data lemma because we made a lemma for secret objects. Uh, so if we have, I, you wrote the right and the left. Mm -hmm. So sorry, you wrote the right and the left. Yeah. Yes, but I, I, I spent this. Yes, yes. <laughs> my bad, but yes. Uh, so we have internal category, and we have index infinity category. Then we can look at the 
space of natural transformations from this time to f, and we can compute this as a certain end. <coughs> Namely, all we have to do is take f and evaluate it at every cm, and then consider so, uh, according uh, well, cell simulator. So this might become a bit clearer if I just tell you what this morphism, well, again, spiritually or heuristically does. Namely, that this functor takes uh, a natural transformation alpha, and now on this end, uh, right? I mean, it, these are infinite, infinite tuples, uh, and uh, here we can evaluate alpha at the identity of cm to obtain uh, an according, uh, because this identity is an n cell, uh, right by definition, because the n cells are just the morphisms from cm to cm. And then it turns out that these are exactly these elements in this end, or that this gives an element in this end. And indeed, uh, this has also been considered in the ordinary categorical context in Jacob's book, where uh, Bart Jacob says there's a chapter on the externalization functor for categories. Uh, and there he, he introduces this notion of internal diagrams of type C. And these are, he doesn't say it, but these are basically exactly the elements in these hands, right? Where we just then again only have two degrees. So one object and one error. And the proof is basically a tautology, just as the proof of the Ineda Lemma in the ordinary categorical context is. It's just currying and applying the Ineda Lemma pointwise. Um, and as a corollary, we again obtain that the externalization functor as a functor of infinity 1 categories is fully faithful. Um, I can uh, just pretend to give a proof. So you can think of this is the space of natural transformations between those two. And then you apply the lemma. <coughs> and then you use the definition of what this is, which are just maps from Cn. D dot, and then you do a little uh, walk around and see that this is the end just over the onset here, from CN to DN, and this is just uh, a notation for the set of transformations from C to D. As simple as simple diagrams in D. And then you use that the that the category of internal categories is fully faithful in here. So these are exactly the maps of internal categories. Let's see the And so we can, in this generality, we can just perform a trick by saying, well, this here then inherits n infinity two categorical structure just by embedding it here and then taking the long class of categories of the image. Right? It's kind of a cheap trick in this generality, but uh, in more explicit context, this actually starts to have meaning. So there is the lemma which states that. The externalization functor is a locally fully faithful 
functor of infinity to k at least. Right? So logically the faithful means is that it gives us the equivalent to the on cross k at least. <coughs> But a thing more is true, uh, namely, let's consider the essential image of the externalization factor. Mm -hmm. And then one can show, uh, in the sense of Pinagou again, that these are exactly the globally small and locally small <coughs> index infinity factor. So locally small is exactly what was what was uh, what Thomas Reich was, was telling us about two days ago. And globally small is a similar thing. I will not define it, but I mean, in this case it's, it's it's basically easy to define, uh, meaning that if we have a we won't tell you anything, but if we start with an index category and then take its core pointwise, so we have to pre-sheaf, then we want that this pre-sheaf is representable. And there is a bit of an issue now here it comes kind of becomes kind of important that we do a physical theory. Because there is an according result in ordinary category theory where we have to replace globally small by, uh, well, Jacobs calls it to have a generic object, uh, which, is, which is an object that wants to be terminal, uh, but isn't quite, because there is a mismatch of identities and isomorphisms, equivalences, and it doesn't quite work out. Um, but you can, you can characterize the image of the externalization functor in a similar way. The nice thing here, though, is that these two guys fit into a very general scheme of comprehension schemes that was, uh, I think, defined by Johnston for ordinary categories and which translates very well to infinity categories. And in this general scheme, it turns out that these, again, are exactly the indexed infinity categories uh, where am I? Uh, Uh, infinity categories with G comprehension for all monomorphisms between finite special sets of finite infinity categories. Okay, whatever that means, just as a scheme, you can you can see that of course this then implies uh, morphisms of banks of this form and morphisms of this form. And from these two, you then can derive that for every internal category C, you can take externalization, and you can take the cotensor in the infinity 2 category of index cross-site categories, and it turns out that this again lands in the image of the externalization functor, which means that first, this guy here is cotensor over finite cross-site categories, and second, the externalization functor preserves it. Right, so these are two things at once. So we actually start to get a quite quite a nice two cat infinity, infinity two cat, right? Uh, so let me say the, let me say this in theorem and then give you some further nice fun facts and then give you an indication that we're done. So, the externalization functor into index infinity categories is an embedding of infinity two categories. <coughs> uh, which preserves limits. So in this case, all finite limits exist here, and so it preserves and reflects those finite limits. And second, it preserves and reflects, just reflects, uh, it preserves and reflects uh, cotenders with finite infinity categories. And also reflects them. Uh, and in the in Jacob's book, he also shows that in the ordinary categorical case. You can say the same thing about exponentials. So if B is Cartesian closed, this will be Cartesian closed, and this functor preserves and reflects exponentials. I didn't do this yet. I think I see no reason why it would be wrong. I just didn't look at it yet. So it's possible that you can extend this result accordingly. And so it turns out that you can, uh, just as we were able to uh, preserve, uh, well, translate and reflect uh, finite limit constructions between B and the pre-sheets over B, 
here we can uh, translate and uh, reflect two categorical notions between this between two category and this between two category. So, before I give you an application of this, let's relate this to more familiar notions in some more specific contexts. So. First, if P is complete, so it has all small limits, then an index infinity category is uh, well in the image of the externalization counter, let's call it whatever, Siegel, I don't know, uh, is in the image of X. So it's small and locally small. If and only if this guy here has a left joint. Okay? And the proof isn't so, so one direction works, for instance, by if it, uh, if, if this thing is represented by some x, then we can use a Kahn extension argument to construct such an adjoint. In the other direction, if we know that it has an adjoint, so we can look at the universal federation. It turns out that this is representable, and then we can take that object here, this cat category, and just push it forward with an adjoint. And that gives us an internal category here, which represents this guy in a nutshell. This also this compares very well, for instance, with a group beetle case, right? So group beetle leader says that if we have a pre-sheet, then it's representable if not even the left joint. It's very classical result, right? Uh, and if it's presentable even, then having a, a left joint just means that it preserves limits. Right? And so we we, we, we recover this uh, this characterization of internal categories by a descent condition. Right? So if it's presentable, then this index category uh, preserves all small limits if and only if it comes from an internal, internal category. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't it be optically complete? Don't you want it to be complete? Are you sure? uh, I think I, I, I couldn't tell you now, but okay. I, when I thought about it, I'm pretty sure I figured okay. it out. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. In fact, yeah, in, 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 this, this translates very well to other more specific contexts. For instance, so I told you about the event of these presentable. This gives us a descent condition. And if these presentable, <laughs> it also comes from a model category. It's kind of a combinatorial model category. And then uh, these, these uh, elements, these index infinity categories, which come from the category, are actually presented by right column functors into the Joel model category. So there's, again, also very, very uh, um, well, classical notion. Um, that can be um, yeah, characterized by internal categories in here. Um, okay, then I drop the last one and just finish with uh, an application. Mm -hmm. on this subobject functor 
in the two category of the term of ranks. Basically, just by trans just a formal two category theory, right? And basically, basic by definition, these are exactly the log Newton topologies uh, in, on B, and these are exactly the closure operators over B, right? So uh, this this correspondence is completely formal; it doesn't really have to do anything with monomorphisms or subobjects or anything. This is just translation uh, between one one two category to the other. Now we can do the same thing in the infinity categorical case, almost. So if B is an infinity topos, then we can again consider <coughs> internal infinity categories in here, the externalization function. Mm -hmm. And we can consider index infinity categories. And now here, in the case of infinity topos, let me finish before you say something. There's an object classifier in here. And this object classifier goes to the full slice uh, uh, factor over B. And now we have we can we can play the same game, and what we obtain is on the one hand uh, a notion of idempotent, this now becomes a mouthful. Idempotent left exact accessible uh, composition on monads. On this object classifier in this two category, in two category, and the same kind of monads on the slice in uh, in this uh, in two category. And now these are we can show that these are exactly um, the higher modalities in the sense of Anel, Bigam, and Finster, right? But the uh, five reflective localizations in the sense of Beaker, Sugar, uh, Sugar. <laughs> uh, so this, this, is a, this is a thing that we know to classify subtopuses. And now it makes sense to call these the higher log here to mean operators. So this will be then a definition, which then and one to one corresponds to these guys. Again, basically just a function pair. Right? And now I lied to you here, just to, to mention technical fact, right? The problem is that there's a problem with size, and so we have to uh, Stratify this somehow along sizes, and then what we work with here are not just single monads, but something I call polymorphic families of such monads, which just glue together well to give you a global one, and then restrict back to give you a, such polymorphic families of monads and the classifiers which actually do exist. All right, thank, you. That, right? thank you. <laughs> Have we got questions, please? Go ahead, Steve. The, the last case with the U, the U is not representable the way the previous case with the sub classifier was representable. So, uh, in order to get the correspondence, is it relevant whether or not this U is a stack? Because in the case of a representable, you're going to get something that maybe is not complete as a internal rest category inside the tissues there, and you need to complete it. Yeah, so you think about so you're thinking of this U maybe also needs to be completed in order to get the correspondence that we want. Yeah, I mean, so, so you're thinking about uh, well, basically the, the strict two category case, right? Because in the infinity category case, I don't have to do such a thing. Because it's already equivalent. To its completion. Yeah, I mean there is uh, so so there. I mean the only reason this is not representable is because it's so large. Too big, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you if you restrict it to to a, to a, well, there are unbound many cardinals yes. for which this guy is <coughs> yeah. indeed representable by an atomic category, not by an object in B, but by an atomic category in B. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is this is exactly so. This is this is precisely representable uh, in the sense that life language of externalization comes here. Mm -hmm. So there you don't need to compute anything. Any more questions? Sorry. A minor technicality. You said locally fully faithful. Shouldn't it just be fully faithful? Yeah, I, I just took the I just took the notation again from Jacob's book to kind of have a reference which I can refer to quite consistently. And he. No, but it's either a local equivalence or fully faithful. But I mean, not locally fully faithful. Yeah, that's I mean, that's literally the word he uses. The mm -hmm. He writes he writes locally fully faithful. 
I don't know why, but but what I mean is it's an, it's an equivalence. Uh, it's a local equivalence. Yeah, local equivalence. Okay. Okay. That's what I mean. Okay. And one more remark: this local is more local is more. It's an available paper from the 70s called. I forgot the name. The negative theory of categories or something. No, no, no. It's a French thing with three pages. Not the JS or something? No, no, no. Oh. Some comp or review. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. 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 I don't know what that answer is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. But yeah, it's nice because. Uh, here you it becomes a strong classifier of the objects rather yes, than yes, it's just generic. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. And I know I was passing too much when you were trying to finish here, but say it again what was the the, the, the second the in the This? Yeah. What this is part? What the, the, the connection between the identical to black accessible um, composition of and Yeah, so uh, so you have this uh, this this index category here, which uh, you can represent or think of as Cartesian quadration over B. This is probably a better way to think about it in this context. Uh, sorry, it's the quadration quadration. Yes, exactly. So yeah, exactly. So yeah, good point. So this is the quadratic uh, quadration, and this is an object in a form of infinity two category. In fact, you can use here very nicely the, 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 the context of regularity you know, about the finity cosmoses, yes. uh, which is a very neat way to, to, to put these things. There are a long list of results which you, can, which you can use here as a black box, which I was very happy to use. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have a notion of a, of a, of a monad uh, on an object in the infinity cosmos, and all these notions here are formal uh, to infinity cosmological notions. And these monads, by the big, you have a notion of the big monad back on density theorem right here. So these correspond to certain junctions, which due to like potency are reflected localizations. Uh, so you have the target vibration, and then you have these reflected localizations, which correspond to these monads. And these are exactly uh, those which correspond to subtopuses. So this is a finite subtopos uh, of B. Uh, which again can be represented, for instance, by factorization systems in B due to the work of Anel Wiedemann, Schreier, and Fitzler, or yeah, directly these correspond then to you have a topos B, and then this is basically the final version of the subtopos B. No more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.